Hi all, welcome back to System Vlog Sessions. In this video, I am going to discuss about System Vlog Modbots. In the last video, I have discussed about interface. So there, I told that inside the interface, we can include modbots and clocking blocks. So as we know, modbots is used to give the direction to the signals because inside the interface, we just declare the signals with the data type, right? Whether it is a logic wire or reg. So we just declare the signals with the data type. But by using the modbots, we can give the we can specify the direction to that signal whether that signal is input or output for the particular block. So by doing that, we can avoid driving the same signal by DUT and test bench. To restrict interface access within a module, there are more port list directions declared within the interface. So it is used to restrict the interface access. When we have multiple modules, it will restrict the interface access in that module. And the mod port groups and specifies the port directions to the wires or signals declared within the interface. So inside the interface, whatever the signals we declare for that signals only, it will specify the port directions. Okay. The keyword mod port indicates that the directions are declared as if it is inside the module. So as the name suggests, mod ports, mod means module and module ports. Okay. So the directions are with respect to the module, not with respect to the test bench. If no mod port is specified in the module header or in the port connection, then all the nets and variables in the interface are accessible with direction in out or ref. That means suppose you have an interface and inside the interface you have mod ports. But while accessing the interface inside the module or test bench, you are not using that mod ports. That time it's fine okay just because you have a uh, mod ports in interface that doesn't mean you have to use it so if you want to restrict the direction for that signal then you can use that mod ports otherwise you can just keep the mod ports in your interface you can just use the interface signals okay that time for that signal the direction will be in out or ref okay so that direction will be in out or ref it will not take the mod ports uh, direction if you don't use it the interface can have any number of mod ports. The wire declared in the interface can be grouped in many mod ports. So inside the interface, we declare all the signals, right? So that signals can be used in mod ports and interface can have multiple mod ports and the same signal we can use in all these mod ports. But the direction will be different. Okay. Here I have a simple example. This is interface interf and inside the interface I have declared four wires A, B, C, D and here I have two mod ports master and slave. Master and slave are the identifiers of mod port. This is the name of the mod port and here for A and B I am providing the direction as input and for C and D I am providing the direction as output and in slave mod port for A and B signal I am providing output and for C and D I am providing the direction input. So here I have two modules, master module and slave module, MS. Okay. Inside the master module, I'm using master mod port. Here you can see intef.master. Intef is the name of the interface and this is how to access the mod ports. Interface dot that mod port name and this is the handle. And for the slave module, I'm using slave mod port. That means this mo M module, this master module can have this direction for the, the signals. Okay. A, B, C, D. And this slave module can have these directions for the signal that means when you declare input for the signals you can't drive or assign any value to it if you try to assign value or driving that signal then you will get the error okay so that is the use of restricting the direction for the signal so input means you can sample it output means you can drive it okay and here the mod port list name can also be specified in the port connection with the module instance so module header means this thing okay here this is the module header and port connection means here. Whatever we have done here, same thing we are doing it in port connection while instantiating the modules M and S, M, U1, here I dot master. That time you can just specify interface here. Both are correct. Here also you can take the mod ports or here also you can take the mod ports, hierarchical name. Importing and exporting task in interface. Now we will see how to import and export the task in interface using the mod ports. Here I have an example simple bus interface. I am passing the clock and I am declaring all the signals. Here I am defining the mod port slave and I am declaring some uh, directions for the signals. And here for task read and write, I am using the keyword export. Export task read write. That means export from the module that uses the mod port. The module which uses the simple bus interface with slave mod port that can export this read and write task to other modules. Okay, and mod port master, one more mod port master and here I am using the keyword import, import for the task read and write, import means import into the module that uses the mod port. So the module which uses the simple bus interface with uh, master mod port that can import this read and write task. So import in the sense it can call this read and write task. Okay, so and one more thing is if you notice here for the export keyword while using the task 
uh, read and write what i am doing just using the identifier right identifier in the sense name of the task read write but while using the import keyword i am writing the full prototype prototype means uh, declaring the arguments okay writing the arguments uh, so here read input logic 7 down to 0 r address so this is what we say prototype so here for the import keyword we have to take care of this whether we have to write the prototype or just the identifier name so most of the time we will use the prototype okay for the import keyword we have to use prototype full prototype and for the export keyword just identifier is uh, enough and here i have a mem mode module with the generic interface generic means unspecified interface and here the read and write tasks are implemented using the hierarchical name hierarchical means this interface dot read so this read and writes are declared as export task right export means this tasks are implemented in the module using the hierarchical name okay so a dot read a dot write so here i have a same arguments number of arguments should be same okay that is the rule and here I have another module CPU mod. Here also I am using generic interface. And here I am calling the read task and write task. So this is my top module. Inside the top module I am instantiating the interface. And here instantiating the modules mem mode and CPU mod. So here sb underscore intef dot slave. That means this mem mode is using the slave uh, slave mod port. So slave mod port what is, what is the restriction? It can export the task. So this module can export this read and write task to CPU mod module. Okay, and sb underscore intef dot master. That means this CPU mod module is using the interface with master mod port. So in the master mod port, what is the restriction? Here, this is the ma master mod port. It's importing the read and write task, right? That means it is calling here. See, b dot read, b dot read. This is nothing but importing the task. And this is implementing means exporting. Okay, it is implementing this task and it can export this task to other modules. Other modules is nothing but CPU mod. So here this mem module is exporting this read and write task and this CPU mod is importing this read and write task. Restrictions on exporting task and functions. So while exporting the task or functions, there will be some restrictions and we have to take care of that. Okay, what are those? We will see. It is illegal to export the same task name from two different modules or two instances of the same module into the same interface unless an extend fork join declaration is used. That means when you are instantiating the module with multiple instances, for example, CPU mod M1, M2. This M1 and M2 are the instances of CPU mod module. That time, so if you are declaring the task or function with, with the keyword extern in the interface, that means what? If you are using only one instance for the CPU mod module, then just extern keyword is enough. But when you have multiple instances, multiple instances means what? It is multiple set of modules, right? M1 is one set of module, M2 is another set of module. So in both the modules, this task has to execute parallelly, right? That's why we will use the keyword extern fork join so when we have multiple instances at the same time all the tasks will be executed so for that we have to use extend fork join keyword if you have single instance cpu mod m1 then no need of using extend fork join keyword just extend is enough in the interface but when you have multiple instances that time you have to use fork join so fork join means what to execute the processes parallelly we will use the fork join right here also fork join is the keyword we have to use with the extend keyword See, extern fork join allows multiple modules to export the same task name to an interface, enabling the task to be invoked concurrently. To call the uh, task concurrently, we have to use extern fork join. This, is, this will be applicable when you are using multiple instances. Okay? For single instance, it is not required. Just extern is enough. So this is how it looks when you use the extern fork join keyword. We are not going to write like this, but when you use the extern fork join keyword, this is what happens internally. Okay? So here, top is your module name consider top is your module name and mem1 and mem2 are the instances of top so here i have two instances right and count slave is the common method i'm using in the interface with the extern fork join keyword okay extern fork join task council count slaves this is how i have to write in the interface so when i write like this it will be executed like this in both instances of the top module it will be parallelly executed count slaves okay when the task is called, each module performs its version of the task, but only the relevant module should take the action. That means when you use the extern fork join keyword for the task, that, that means what? All the methods will be executed parallel in all the instances of the module. So some, in, some module may not require that action. That time the relevant module should take the action. So in which module the action is required, that module can use that task. Otherwise, it, can, it doesn't have to use it. Okay, But the methods will be executed whether you need it or not the methods will be executed but the relevant model should take the action functions cannot be handled this way because they must return a single result and multiple returns would conflict that means this will be applicable for only task 
this external fork join will apply for task because task may result uh, multiple outputs but functions results single output right so it will return single value so when you call the function multiple times parallelly then which result it has to consider that's why functions cannot be handled this way because they must return a single result and multiple returns would conflict the effect of a disable on an extern fork join task is as follows so we can disable the extern fork join methods how we will see so first one is if the task is referenced via the interface instance all the task call shall be disabled and if the task is referenced via the module instance only the task call to that module instance shall be disabled that means if you are disabling the task using the module instance that time it will applicable for only to that module here mem1 is the instance right so i have mem1 and mem2 two instances but here i'm using mem1 instance disable is the keyword you have to use disable mem1 dot interface handle dot the task name here it will be applicable for only mem1 module but if you are using the interface instance here sb underscore intep dot write method that means it will be applicable for all the instances of the module mem1 mem2 mem3 for all the instances the method will be disabled okay this is two ways to disable the external fork join methods and if an interface contains an external fork join task and no module connected to that interface defines the task then any call to that task shall report a runtime error and return immediately with no effect that means you are declaring the method with external fork join keyword but you are not implemented that task in the module that time it will lead to the runtime error okay so if you are using external fork join and method name you have to implement it in the module if you don't implement and you are just using the method name in the interface by using the extern fork join keyword then it will lead to runtime error thank you